are back, bumblebees. Um, this is an R and R or a side piece or whatever you would like to call that. I don't know the episode numbers at this point. I don't think it's really relevant. I'm just here. Um, we have done two episodes currently, uh, based off of the book Fight Right. The mm-hmm. first one was I versus You statements. The second one was the flood. This one is going to be soft startups and repairs. And then we're going to do another episode right after this one about manipulation, which has nothing to do with that book. It's just a discussion that I want to have. Last two times we've done this, I've had notes. I don't have notes. Ooh, we're winging it. We are winging it. Hey. Uh, to be honest, I wasn't even sure I wanted to record today, but I'm afraid of getting behind. So like. Oh, I get that. Yeah. I don't want to record today either. We just dropped over 100 packages at the post office. Yeah. So I sent out your bath line. I think there's like three or four boxes that need to go out or figure it out still, but. I was thinking about making a post to Patreon saying, hey, guys, I need a break. Yeah. Well, we're getting emails. People are like, oh, you already printed the label, but it hasn't gone out yet. Did my package get lost? Yeah. That's my fault. Why is was, that your because fault? Because I was trying to prepare packing slips with labels and yeah. make sure that everything went oh, the way that yeah. it was. And because it took so long to actually package everything, people are wondering where it's at. But Sorry it took so long, guys. Life happens. It was a one-man show. So to Peaches, what does the soft startup or harsh startup look like? Can you give an example of a harsh startup and how you can do it right? A harsh startup to me would look like, what the fuck is the matter with you? Okay, that's pretty harsh. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I've experienced that. So that that was definitely a harsh startup. I would say a soft startup is, hey, babe, when you did that yesterday, that, that bothered me. Okay. How about what the fuck is wrong with you? Or <clears throat> yesterday I felt like X when this situation was happening. And while this was happening, because I felt like X, I wanted to make sure that we had a discussion when things were calm and that situation had passed so that we can fix what's going on. Yeah, that's good. I just try and make it so that this ties into yeah. the I versus you. Yeah, that works. Because that you, you hit me with the you twice. I did. <laughs> the fuck is wrong with you? Was why did you do that to me yesterday? Yeah. That's not what I said. The second statement I said, what when you did that yesterday, it bothered me. When you did that yesterday, oh, damn, it bothered you're right. me. Yeah. Oh gosh. Clearly, I still need to work on that. I, I think everybody still needs to work on that. It's hard. I try really hard. Yeah. Yeah. I think the I versus you statements is the hardest thing because we're so used to throwing blame mm-hmm. because. It's society. Uh, yeah. I, I think it comes more because we're not okay. And because we're not okay and because because we're not okay from something that someone else did. And we want them to understand that it's their fault the way we feel this way. Mm -hmm. But in doing the soft startups, you have to have the conversation without judgment, criticism, contempt, or blame. Okay. Because when you have the soft startup, (laughs) there's not a conversation where there's hostility. Right. It's if, if it was something that somebody else did and you were having a conversation with me about it and you were like, I can't believe they did blah, blah, blah. I'm of course not going to get defensive. I might be like, yeah, how dare them? But if you said it to them, they might get defensive because nobody wants to feel like they've hurt somebody or that they're in the wrong or they have potentially, you know, disrupted someone's life. Right. <clears throat> so with the harsh startups, um, this there are I think there are tools that we can utilize that can give you guys a leg up when having a conversation. And I think a lot of this starts with journaling, because if you're able to um, process your thoughts on paper. Well, you're physically writing down instead of typing. It's a much slower process because most of us don't write every single day. We no. type and we text. Mm-hmm. And even with typing and texting, you find yourself backspacing and retyping things. Oh, gosh, I get so frustrated. Right. So if you have to physically write it down and you write it and you read it and it doesn't look right, you got to scribble it out. So then you have time to recategorize your thought process. If you start at the end and have to backpedal, you're starting at the end of the situation and going to the beginning. Putting it in writing means that you can rewrite it from the beginning and put it in so that you can start with yesterday while all of while we were driving, right? Because now it's not a you thing. It's not an I thing. We were driving yesterday. So while we were driving yesterday, um, there were a couple of things that were said. There's no I or you there. Mm -hmm. And those things Mm -hmm. that were said made me feel like blah, 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 blah. Okay. Because now there's no blame, shame, contempt, criticism, judgment. It's it's just a conversation. 
that soft startup has to remain in the first three minutes of a conversation. Or it's gone. Or you cannot reclaim that initial three minutes. Right. If you have three minutes of harsh startup, you can't go to an easy startup. Soft. <clears throat> you can go from a soft startup to a harsh startup. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But you can't reclaim the opposite way. Yeah. So it's important to process the things that you need to talk about. Write it down if you have to journal. And then find out what it is exactly that you need and then find a, a very soft way to deliver it to your person. Now, there's going to be people who listen to this that go, I don't need to talk to my, my person like a child. They're adults. They can handle it. You guys tell us all the time to be direct. We do. Mm -hmm. And by you telling them what you need, that is you being direct. Yep. If you are intentionally throwing blame, shame, judgment, criticism, contempt, shade, shade throwing shade at people, you're being, direct and being directly an asshole. You don't have to do that. You can be direct with what you need. I need to know that <clears throat> when we have situations like yesterday that you're not going to leave. It's a very fair statement. Borderline personality disorder, abandonment issues are real for us. I need to know in the moment of conflict when you are angry with me that you are not withdrawing your love from me. It's a very real need. Mm -hmm. People feel that. Having those conversations, and that specifically is going to lead in the repair conversation, but that those situations are the need of what's actually going on in the moment. So if you say something that makes each other angry and, and your anger is masking what it is that you need, you're not going to come to a resolution because you're going to end the conversation agreeing to disagree because you're fucking holding your standpoints and you're pissed. When was the last time any of you had a con an argument where resolution happened at the end of that argument? I don't believe that it's possible to do that. I think that when emotions get heightened and things are feeling very volatile, mm -hmm. you are not <clears> going <throat> to be able to come to an agreement. You are going to agree to disagree yeah. just to stop fighting because you don't want to be angry. You don't want to be thinking about leaving your person. You, you want things to resolve. So do we want to give examples? Do we want to just move on from that conversation? Because we have had, I'm, I'm not trying to do a full hour on harsh startups. Okay. I, I feel like there's, I mean, we're only seven minutes in, but. I feel like there's a lot of things that can be stated in that, but I think that we can do examples on my, yeah. Okay. Cause on my end, I've covered everything that I had. I really should have made notes. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So now after hearing all of that, I'm going to rephrase myself. So this is me, not logic brain. I am putting myself in the mindset of I'm a low IQ. I'm emotional. I'm trying not to cry. And you just asked me, babe, I can tell something's going on. What's up? I feel things and I need minutes. <laughs> Cause that's an I statement, right? Yeah. And that's because when I'm emotional, anger is a very easy emotion for me. It, it, I think it's easy for everyone. And it's like my default when I'm going through it because it's my protective layer. You're not going to, poke and prod. I mean, you could poke and prod, but when I'm angry, you're not going to get to the thing that's actually hurting me and then use it against me. Self-defense mechanism. Right. So I would say something stupid like that in the moment just to get across like I'm going through it. This is a me problem. I'm feeling things. And then as I calm down, because it takes like, what, 20 to 30 minutes for the nervous system to... To reset, yeah. To reset and calm down. I, I would come back to you and be like, okay, I've processed a little bit. I'm not as emotional. If I don't know what's going on, I'm going to tell you I don't know what's going on. If I can pinpoint a moment, like the example you gave in the car. All right. This is my first hurdle. I'm jumping over, guys. Let's see if I fuck it up. <laughs> Yesterday in the car, there was an instant brought up and the tone in which things were said, I now feel insecure. Why are you holding the cookie like as a joint? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if you're going to eat it or hit it. <laughs> because. Be eating or be passing. Give me some of that cookie, woman. <laughs> Would you? 
That's why. So I'm always ready <laughs> <laughs> to eat or pass it on to be eaten. Um. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> How was that for an I statement? It was good. Fantastic. It 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 eliminates the attack on one person. Right. So you can even take that a step further and recognize the accountability in that because in the event that that was a conversation that was being had, we both would have been temperamental. We would mm -hmm. not have been okay. It would have elevated to the point where we were both frustrated. So saying yesterday during that conversation, things got elevated or they were tonal or temperamental or whatever, mm -hmm. you are addressing the fact that it was both of us, that we did it. And it's not a you problem. It's a, hey, we were kind of fucked up towards each other. I, I think that that's an important assessment because it, it does eliminate the guilt of it. It does. I'm going to start to have to like, I'm going to start to have to like my, sorry, Jordan B. Peterson. <laughs> I'm listening to him to try to like, I, I've talked about this and I just said like again. I'm not a dumb bitch. I'm just trying to work on myself and I'm excited about the conversation. So I'm slipping on my vocabulary. Okay. All so right. what were you trying to say? I am going to have pre-planned phrases like ad lib, like fill in the blank for those I feel statements the way that people who are learning a new language learn like where's the bathroom that way they can ask the necessities when they go somewhere i'm gonna do that and it might sound silly or goofy that is how i transition things it's how everyone learns yeah it's no different than us explaining to our daughter yesterday the difference between starving and hunger right so having that go-to conversation is why we use use statements mm -hmm. because our parents did it to us. Yeah. Other people have done it to us. We have done it to everyone in our lives. And that is normal behavior in society because people have not explained this yet. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. not a polite conversation anymore. We watch Shogun. Such oh, a good show. Gosh, I love it. I but, love it. I, it's made me realize that I'm nowhere near the lady. I think I am. <laughs> In terms of being a warrior, because all those guys are samurais, mm -hmm. there is so much honor and respect in the way that they talk. And it's not blaming. They don't do that. Like they have honest conversations without disrespect. Mm -hmm. And I view making you statements as a disrespectful thing because you are throwing judgment on somebody. We need to have a right. conversation on judgment too when we do manipulation. But I think we should have a breakdown of Shogun because we had two different takeaways from that show. And mine is more from the woman's perspective. What do you mean? Because seeing the way that women behaved in that time frame, in that culture, with one another and then with men. I mean, I, I did see all the things that you're talking about. It was like a whole different, it's two different, it's all politics, but it's different branches, mm. if that makes sense. And I focused more on the women's side of things because I related more to it. So, The term Bushido? Bushido mm -hmm. means to serve. Yeah. So that is everyone serves in that samurai culture. And like Bushido means a lot more than that, but it is a service. Mm -hmm. um, and it's to do everything with perfection. If you're going to dedicate your time to something, you need to do it to the best of your ability. And yeah. like you should try to master those things. So like the art of communication, those guys have spent time trying to master it. The poetry aspect of it where they do like little challenges and oh, all, yeah. all, of, start doing that. all of that is learned skill. Mm -hmm. And it comes from not trying to disappoint or disapprove. And you see a lot of those people just being silent because they're really processing what needs to be said versus just spouting off bullshit. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's a good show. Mm -hmm. And I understand that it's a TV show. Um, and it's dramatized. And it is dramatized. But there's a whole lot of lessons to be learned from that mm -hmm. era. Um, and the the intent, honor, and respect and integrity that comes into all of that. Um. I don't remember why I got on that topic, but I, I think that when you speak from a place of, of trying to not um, intentionally disrespect somebody, you're going to have a very different conversation. Mm -hmm. And I use the di intentionally disrespect because when you use, when you, when you get hurt from a conversation or an action, 
and you feel a certain way about it, you want your the, the person who hurt you to feel a certain way. That's normal behavior as well. We want revenge. Or you want them to care. You want them to understand. Mm-hmm. So it could be any of those three things. I believe that any of those three things are valid. But if I'm hurting and I can't explain to you why I'm hurting and I just want you to know I'm hurt, if we have a conversation and you've heard me and I continue, it's because I don't feel my hurt dissipating. And you're, it, we've had conversations where I've told you, like, yeah. I've heard you, I validated you. Are you still upset right now because you're repeating yourself? What can I do to make that go away? And you're like, damn. Because I didn't recognize that I was doing that. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was a... Uh... I was on autopilot. Yeah, you told me the next day it was like I slapped you in the face with logic. <laughs> it was. I felt like, where the fuck did the white glove come from? My gosh. Yeah. 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 Those, those, um, that natural reaction is why we want to to do the things that we're doing in terms of you always, you never, everyone always, you know, it, it's why we speak in definites and try to throw shade and, and make it about the other people because we're still hurting. Mm-hmm. And what we're looking for mm-hmm. in those moments is not just resolution, but we want to feel like we're okay. We want to feel like we're heard. Absolutely. We want to feel like we're heard, but we don't want to feel like this anymore. Right. If mm-hmm. the conversation makes you upset and it makes you hurt in any way, you want the hurt to stop. And that hurt's not going to stop unless resolution comes or time comes in your process. So if you can start the processing in the next day or the day after, have a conversation about what it was that made you feel the hurt um, or why you took the situation the way you did that allowed you to hurt and why you chose to respond to it the way that you did or however you want to word that, that changes the narrative and it gives you resolution a whole lot faster. This removes the long-term resentment. I bought water balloons and I was going to make a crazy little TikTok and I don't think we're going to do it now, but I bought water balloons and I was going to stick one on a faucet. And I was going to go, this is your relationship. Mm -hmm. The water's resentment. Something happens and I was going to turn the water on and go, um, this is non-resolved conflict. You've had an argument. Nothing's been resolved. And I'm going to let the balloon fill up while I'm talking. I'm going to turn the water off. A couple days go by. This is still here because nothing's been resolved. Something new has now come up and all of this is still here. And I was going to turn the water on and continue talking. Mm. And I was going to wait until the balloon looked like it was ready to bust. And then I was going to turn the water off and stop talking and be like, what do you think is going to happen the next time something trivial comes up and there's no more room left in this because nothing has been resolved. It's going to explode. And when it explodes, everything that you've been holding on to is going to come out and it's going to come out all at once. It's not going to be cohesive, coherent. It's not going to make any fucking sense. And it's going to disrupt everything. Yeah. And I thought it would have been a really good analogy. And I thought it would have been a cool little concept. I just don't really give a fuck to do it anymore because I was excited about it for like three days. And then the excitement's gone. That's how long it took the water balloons to get here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I may still do it. We have a space at the other at the studio to actually use the sink for that. But I, I think it's a good idea. I, I think that it's important to realize that we are responsible for our safety. Mm-hmm. Other people are not. We are responsible for our mental health. We are responsible for um, the communication techniques that we use. Other people are not responsible for that. They're not responsible for your triggers. They're not responsible for how you respond to your triggers. You can try to navigate a rough sea to get the best outcome, or you can just fucking try to plow through it and see what happens. But either way, that's a choice. You're going to either sink or swim, but those are the decisions that you're making because the other people are the rough waters. Like, so... I think that's the importance of the the soft and, and harsh startups. Okay. I think that it's really important to to have a plan of how you're going to have your conversation. The journal is a good tool. Um, just beginning the conversation, like this is how I'm going to start the conversation, could be enough. You just have to remember once you've started the conversation that you're not making new statements because mm-hmm. that's not conducive to fixing what's going on. Um, there's also a thing that you guys can do that you can pull out a piece of paper and write down all of the things that you felt in the moment and then read over it and go, okay, I was sad first that hurt. Well, why did that hurt? And then you can write next to it. It hurt because I immediately thought I fucked up and you were going to leave. So hurt, fear, abandonment, right? So now you can do like a a little, Ooh, I love charts. uh, Yeah. There's a name for that. It's a dichotomy tree dichotomy tree yeah so you could do a dichotomy tree if you need to and then you can even show it to your person be like this is my initial fuck you and then this is everything that happened under the surface and when i got to the very bottom and i understood what all this was this is what caused it 
got to the root. Yeah. Or you can even flip it over and do it backwards. <laughs> yeah. Like a root system. Right. I like that. Yep. Oh, I'm going to start journaling. We're going to go through so much paper. I have my Kindle. Yeah. I'm going to use my Kindle. I have a lot of notes in that thing. I need to clean that up. Yeah. I have I have journals all over the place. Yeah. I have like eight of them because I, I don't want to have to get up and look for them. If I sit down and I have a thought and I can't just write it down real quick, I have to find my phone. And I always have my phone on me. But having a physical paper slows me down. Like yeah. I said earlier, I, it takes me a whole lot longer to write yeah. a paragraph than it does text. So I can, if I have to handwrite it all, I also realize that that's a, a discernible skill that if you don't use, will will go away. Writing? Yes. Yeah. Because I can text and everything is spelled properly, but when I have to write it, I have to slow my brain down so much that my my there is correct. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like. Mm-hmm. My handwriting's looking flaky. My handwriting looks like dog shit. Yeah. I and I don't care. Nobody's reading it but you, so. Yeah. Um, do you want to just make this one episode? We can. Because we're, we're 20 minutes in. A little 20-minute episode, yeah. Just do this as like a filler piece? Mm-hmm. We won't be able to, to, to drop it on a Friday. It'll just be a bonus drop. Well, what else do you want to talk about? Well, I have I have the manipulation and judgment conversation that I want to have. But I was hoping oh repair. Repair is the other part of this. We, oh, we okay. have to have a repair conversation still. Perfect. Duh. Um, wow. I'm I'm really obsessed with the fact that we're under 40 minutes. I'm like, how the fuck am I gonna make this 40 minute conversation? And I missed the other half of the conversation. Yeah. What does repair look like to you? Repair to me is You mean in relationships or in communication? In in conflict. In conflict. So repair looks like coming together after the initial conflict, like after feelings have settled, and having constructive conversation about what happened, why did it happen, what we can do to prevent it in the future, and acknowledging what we both did wrong in the conversation, like acknowledging... On both ends, okay, well, this is where the miscommunication happened for me and this is where it happened for me or whatever the, the thing was. And then changed action going forward. Okay. Or were so, you looking for a statement? Uh, I, I, I asked a question and you okay. answered it. What do you... Um, so how would you start that then? Because so, um, I, I have a very specific example and ours are very not the same. Okay. So I have also been thinking about this a lot longer than you have yeah. because this is something that I've been wanting to do. Okay. So if we had a big blow up, let's say we actually had a fight that lasted three days. Oh, wow. Okay. Right. Because we haven't, we've never broached that. We've yeah, never that's... had a fight last more than eight hours. So like we have like an ongoing disruption that three days, like okay. we, we are at I just started getting palpitations. Like how, how are we going to repair this situation? Because in a three day conflict, I can guarantee you there's going to be shit said that shouldn't be said. Yeah. There's going to be a whole lot of hurt feelings. There's going to be pettiness and childlike behavior. There will be emotional instability. There will be abandonment. There will be a whole lot of things. Both and of our borderline will be kicking. And after, after that happens, realizing that things need to be resolved or repaired. How how does that repair look? What would your steps be? Um I'm going to start crying. I don't like this hypothetical. <laughs> this sucks. People live like this. Uh, this is awful. This is imaginary and I'm upset. <laughs> I would approach you in a moment where you're not doing anything, like you're just walking out of the bathroom, I'm like, hey, do you have a second? <laughs> I'm, I would trap you in that moment because you, yeah. you got nothing else going on. What are you going to do? Tell me no. I'm going to go watch TV. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to ask you if you have a second. And I would say that I'm sorry that I've done things to push you away and I miss you. Okay. And then I would start crying <laughs> and wait for your reaction to see if you're mad still. And then I would start crying. <laughs> That's manipulation. No, I wouldn't be able to help it. I'm know, crying I, now. I know. <laughs> I know. 
I really do look at that as a manipulation tool, though, because so many women use crying as manipulation towards men. Do you men. think I would do that to you? No. Uh, no, because I know that you're a crier. Okay. If if I had never seen you cry and we got into a conflict and you just started crying, I would absolutely believe it was manipulation. Okay. Especially if you were angry. Yeah. Yep. If, if you were one of those people that only cried in times where you needed to win... Because that is a thing for people. People feel the need to win versus the need to resolve. All right. But. That that would be how I approach that. That would that would be what I do. Okay, so then let me ask you this. Do you think that there's things that can be done during conflict that could either stop the conflict or repair during conflict? This is me looking for a very specific answer, guys. Because <laughs> again, I've been thinking about this right. a lot. Um, well, with us specifically, I, I would give you space to process. I would... If you were not ready to have conversations and you were still upset... And like I was ready to have the conversation of me like owning up to the things that I've done wrong. I would do that. I, I would let you know that I don't expect you to reciprocate that in that moment. Like I just want you to know where I'm at right now. And I, I would continue being attentive, like asking you if you need things, cooking dinner. Going out of my way to be lovey on you, not like overly, because when you're going through it, you don't like to be touched too much. So like, I'll, I'll still give you kisses and whatnot and let you know that I still love you. Okay, so what about in conflict? Like in the conflict, like we are actively saying things in, to each in other? In the middle of it, yep. Um, we're in the car. Okay. We're having an argument. What are things that can be done to repair in the moment while we're in the car arguing to deescalate? Repeating things back to you. Okay. That's definitely one of them. We, we actually give a lot of these throughout the yeah. podcast. Mm. So some of the specifics that I was looking for is. Oh, uh, okay. Go ahead. I, I was going to keep going. All right. Go have at it. No. I was going to just put more thought into it, but if you're ready to give the list. Okay. So some of the things that we we have talked about a lot is I love you. We don't talk to each other that way. Yeah. Right. Because in the moment the I love you is the repair. Right. If, if we are in the middle of a conversation and I say some offhanded shit and it really pisses you off, you have the option to like, can you rephrase that for me, please? Yeah. Or you can get mad and react. If you get mad and react, I have the choice of reacting mm -hmm. or rephrasing or, or dialing you back. Or like, whoa, whoa, where did that come from? Right? So these are things that that kind of pause the moment. In a moment, in a situation where we're driving in the car, let's say that I say something and don't realize that I hurt you. And you start to get defensive and then get shitty. And I'm like, whoa, where did that come from? And you are still shitty because you're hurt and you're trying to express yourself and you're emotional. I can allow that to continue, which is going to escalate me. Or I can hit you with, I love you. We don't talk to each other that way. Mm -hmm. Or I could reach over and grab your hand. Because we know that it takes five positives to to outweigh one negative to outweigh one negative during conflict. Yeah. Me grabbing your hand and telling you that I love you while we are in conflict, even though you're probably not going to want to hold my hand because you're like, fuck you right now because you're mad at me. <laughs> right. Me holding your hand is letting you know that this bond is here. I love you. And we're not this is not going to go anywhere. We're not we're not we're going to get through this. Right. That is a repair. Um, doing things that <clears throat> can ease your person's um, triggers or the, the things that are their go-to issues. One of your big repairs are hugs. Yeah. Right? If we are going through it and we are having an argument and you're crying, one of the things that I can do to instantly get you back to zero is to hold you and let you cry for a minute. Because you do well with compression and you do well with the, the hug lets you know that I'm not withdrawing from you. 
That is a fucking prime example of what a repair is. Mm -hmm. And when I was thinking of all of this, I never understood the repair thing. Yeah. I never understood the need for human contact and anger because I don't like being touched. When I'm angry like that, the the very the, the get off of me, get the fuck away from me is very real. Yeah. Because isolation is how I process my shit. It allows me to cry, it allows me to get it all out, work through my problems without having more shit added on to it. That comes from me having to self-soothe and figure my shit out as a child. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that's childhood trauma. I'm saying that's learned behavior from my childhood into adult life that I have used as a coping mechanism for everything because that has kept me safe. It's not a trauma response. It's not a trigger. That is my processing capabilities. Right. You and mm -hmm. I having major conversations and then you saying that, hey, why aren't you touching my feet while we're on the couch? Or why haven't you kissed me good morning? Or whatever is not something that I ever needed to think about because I'm still going through what I'm going through. And until things feel right between us, I'm not giving you those things. And that's not a fuck you to me or to you. It's me. I'm sorry. It's not a fuck you to you. It's a me working through me not feeling right or that to be acceptable or whatever it is that I'm going through, which is not the wrong thing. That's just my coping mechanism. So knowing that I had to hug you and when we're going through conflict to let you know that I'm not leaving or to make you feel however you need to feel in the moment, that was my first introduction to what repair during conflict looks like from a physical standpoint. Mm -hmm. The, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. I didn't mean to talk to you like that. My tone came wrong. Whoa, whoa, you're talking to my guy all wrong, right? That's, that's a thing. And I understand that. And I understand that the verbal repair of it because you're able to pause the conversation and regress. A lot of times people will say some shit and they'll have a very intent meaning behind it. But because of the way it's worded, my cognitive bias and Tom's cognitive bias, Betty's cognitive bias and Fred's cognitive bias is all going to get a different take. This falls into the conversation that we were talking about yesterday on the podcast on episode 220 about the courtroom. One person can say something and it will have five different meanings to five different people because of the way that we, we view the world. Mm -hmm. It could be a lack of understanding. It could be too much understanding. It could be a greater uh, emphasis on vernacular. It could be a lack of speech. Maybe somebody doesn't speak the same language fluently. Mm -hmm. All of those things matter. And, and when you realize that everyone is going to see things differently, pausing the situation and going, that's not how I meant that to come across. I am, I'm sorry. You are defusing and repairing that harsh startup within the first, as soon as you realize that that has happened. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> sometimes those, those, those misunderstandings can go on for much longer than two or three minutes or four or five minutes or 20 minutes because one person will repeat the same thing over and over again, trying to make the other person understand it. Well, the other person didn't understand it the first time it was said, if you repeat it the same way every single time, what makes you think that they're going to understand it the next time? Like, mm -hmm. and, you know, and then the yelling starts. Well, I've, how many fucking times do I got to tell you that kind of shit? Like, that's not helpful. Um, I know that repair, when, when we say repair, people feel like that's the aftermath of the argument when resolution starts coming because you are working through the actual problem. I, I think that repair is as much as they, the Gottman Institute uses the term and they do a really good of explaining it. I don't think that repair is the right instance of what needs to happen in the moment that you are repairing what you did. And I get that there's got to be a better terminology for it. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I guess maybe because of speech and, and what words actually mean repair does work, but it feels aftermath for me. Cause the first time I heard repair, I'm like, okay, this is, this is how we're going to fix the conflict after the fact. And when they started explaining that it's happening in conflict and you were doing things like, like the, the school thing, when you're having an argument between two co-parents about where the kids are going to school, if you pause and go, look, I, I love that you're so passionate about where the kids are going to get educated from. We need to figure this out. We need to take it down a notch. Mm -hmm. That is a repair in the moment because you're obviously arguing and that is an easy way to give a compliment, recognize the other person's passion and d diffuse the situation. How, what, what, what would you call that? What, sh what would that work other than repair? <clears throat> on-site medic yeah i need a medic over here <laughs> um, um there's got to be a better way to word that 
that makes people think about it in the moment and not after the fact. Even if they just put on demand repair or yeah, it needs to be, it needs to be prioritized. I, I think that doing those things as conflict starts to get tense, physical touch, right? positive affirmation, these kind of things are going to defuse the situation. Um, and it can be done from a place of love. Strategic tenderness. Yeah. I mean, it could be. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, tactical tenderness. Tactical. Uh, for you guys out there, it makes it sound cool. Like, <laughs> tactical tenderness. Um, this, this whole conversation is going to lead into the manipulation conversation because all of that is manipulation. Yeah. Everybody has <laughs> manipulation as a, a bad thing. It's not. There's a blower outside as they're doing our mosquito treatment. Rewarding good behavior is manipulation. It is. You are you giving. We'll, we'll get into that. Okay. <laughs> because that, that's an entire discussion. It is. People people put so much in emphasis on what manipulation is. That's manipulating. That's controlling behavior. Blah 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 blah. Positive things, right, are still judgment and manipulation if they're if they're being used to get a desired outcome. That's mm -hmm. what manipulation is. Anyways, we'll get into that. Um, so what are some other things that people can do to repair? What if, what if somebody is a stay at home mom that's completely touched out, overstimulated and does not want their hand held or hugged during conflict? What would be a good way for the husband to repair in the moment to deescalate? I'm hearing you're overwhelmed. I'm going to keep the kids occupied for an hour. Let's take a deep breath and I'll let you center yourself and then we can revisit this conversation and try to solve it. Okay. So that's the pause. But where's the positive in that? Like the hug or the handhold oh. or the. Well, it's the self care time. The I love you. The I love you. Say I love you. You're so okay. hot when you're angry. You need a break, babe. That, that actually <laughs> fucking works. That works because you are, you are basically calling them beautiful. Yeah. The, that you want to talk about pushing somebody off their heels mm -hmm. or off the toes of their feet and onto their heels when they when you were like at each other and you call somebody beautiful or pay them a compliment. That would fuck me up. Because nobody's used to hearing that. Mm -hmm. In the moment, you're both tense. God, I fucking love you when you're angry. You know what I mean? Like obviously that's it's kind of funny. You might even laugh about it. Yeah, that almost just made me chuckle. You can find ways to be sincere. And comical to diffuse what's currently happening mm -hmm. to to relax the situation. And I think that's I think that's the important part of the repair is that in initiate the initial decompression. Mm -hmm. Like the we're gonna open the steam valves a little bit. What were you about to say? I saw a TikTok of a dude who made his girlfriend put on a party hat during their argument so they couldn't take each other seriously. Yeah, in that fight right book, they say that there was an argument between two lawyers mm -hmm. and every time they were getting too heated and things were getting too escalated. One of them would have to say, um, I would like to enter argument into counsel or whatever, however they word lawyer statements. And they would take it from being, because lawyers are argumentative, that's their job. Mm -hmm. And they would bring that into their personal relationship and they would lawyer each other. And when they realized they were lawyering, lawyering, lawyering each other, they would have to make a lawyer joke to make them both laugh and giggle and realize that they're fucking treating each other mm -hmm. like a job instead of a, a couple. And I thought that was fucking genius. It is. Because you're 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 basically making fun of yourselves mm -hmm. in the moment, realizing that you're being fucking stupid and treating your person not like your person. This is this is a, a problem with blue collar workers. This is a problem with entrepreneurs, small business owners, anybody who's in a position of leadership or power mm -hmm. to go mm -hmm. from being that person all day long to coming home and being a father or a husband or a wife or a mom. You are going to have to put that shit away and leave it outside of the home because you can't have two people leading the house. You can't have two people butting heads all the time and expect to have a successful harmonious environment. Right. Yep. What are we at now? 41 minutes. Word. I'm gonna bullshit for a few more minutes just so that we're over that mark because I did get up. I want to get it to 50, 55, and then we'll wrap it up. Okay. Um, so, uh, from a husband's standpoint, in the event that 
I had a really bad day at work and I came home as a husband and you were also having a bad day at home. You're overwhelmed. The school called kids fucking threw mashed potatoes and gravy at someone or stuck bubble gum in someone's hair and, or there's a lice outbreak at school and you're overwhelmed and doing laundry. And there's a whole lot of other things that are going on and we haven't talked throughout the day. And on the way home, I was supposed to stop and pick up ketchup because the kids won't eat whatever it is without, without ketchup. Right. Um, and I walk in the door and I'm not holding the bag. And the first thing you say to me is where's the ketchup? My initial reaction is gonna be fuck because I knew I was supposed to grab that ketchup, but I'm overwhelmed right now. And Mm -hmm. when I was driving home, I was thinking of my decompression and not about the kids or the fact that there's no ketchup. So now I have to go back to the store or the kids just aren't going to have ketchup with whatever it is that they're eating. My guilt and not getting the ketchup and feeling bad and you being angry about there not being ketchup and having to us both deal with the kids is going to create a tension in the house. A wife's standpoint was what, why did you forget the ketchup? What happened? What's going on? Are you okay? Cause mm-hmm. now there's a soft startup we're, we're checking on each other now, instead of throwing blame or guilt, we're like, I can't fucking believe you did that. I wonder if that scenario where I went from fuck, I forgot to catch up to, well, I'm going to shower and then go back to the store. I wonder if you as the wife using a repair statement, like, well, what's going on? Because that's not like you, if that would allow me to, open up about my day. And while I'm opening up about my day, I wonder if I would be able to tell that the house is in total disarray because you're now going through the laundry aspects of lice. Right? Like Mm -hmm. I, I, because I've never experienced that. I've never in my life seen two people both in a flooded mind state repair during the moment. And I'm curious if that would be able to be a thing because I'm, I I would like to believe yes. Right. Well, why don't we try? (laughs) Because we don't get flooded at the same time like that. We've never experienced that. In the event that we ever experienced something like that, I would love to try it. I would like to believe that we would be able to realize that both of our worlds are fucked up and we Mm -hmm. can kind of check in in the moment because we have more knowledge than most people do because of the last fucking two years of of self-help books and all the shit that we've been doing. I also think that it's more likely that in the event that a woman checks in with her man and he's going through it, it's either going to be, I've had a bad day and I'm tired and I just forgot, which means you're not safe to talk to. And it doesn't matter what I'm going through because I'm in trouble for forgetting the ketchup. Mm -hmm. I know that you're, you're angry with me right now and me telling you what I'm going through doesn't really matter to you. You're just probing so that I can go do what I need to do. Right. You're, I, I, that I've seen, I've seen a lot of that. I've experienced that. The other situation would be, I guess three. The second one would be, oh my God, she's really checking in on me. I can really vent and then lay everything out. Hopefully that's the case. I think that that's a much better than the first scenario, but we can have the discussion of what's going on throughout my day. My boss is a piece of shit. Water main exploded. I burned myself with a welder torch, you know, whatever. I, I don't know. Like whatever it is that's going on that's just had a bad series of moments. Maybe somebody quit and you had to do three times the work instead of one and a half times the work you normally do. And it's just been a very long day. We're stressed out. That would be a good scenario. The mm-hmm. best scenario would be realizing and dumping all of that. Somebody going, well, how has your day been? Thank you for checking on me. First and foremost, thank you for checking on me. How has your day been? I'm going to shower and I'll go get the ketchup before dinner. But thank you for checking on me. How has your day been? Because I, I don't need to shower right now. Like I, I'm, I'm fucking being um, emotionally open with what I'm going through. I'm not just tired. I'm not just exhausted. My work life sucks. I'm stressed about the bills. The kids can be a lot sometimes. I was thinking about ending myself on the way home because that sounds like a whole lot easier than continuing to live like this for the next 15 years of my fucking life. Thank you for ch- for checking on me. You want to take a shower? You, you know what I mean? Like th- that would be a really good scenario. What are you going through? Why is the house in disarray? Where are all the pillow covers? What, what's going on? Mm-hmm. You know, now we have a real discussion because I just got to unload. You get to unload. We're both going through shit. Well, I have to go get ketchup. Is there anything else I need? How are we good on laundry detergent? Do we need fucking uh, fabric softener uh, sheets, dryer sheets? Like, is there anything else I can get while I'm out? Do you want me to just pick up dinner so you don't have to cook tonight and we can focus on this? 
that is the real ultimate goal of teamwork. Mm -hmm. I think I have never experienced any of those other than the first one in my real life. I've never witnessed it from other people. It has always been the first scenario. Doesn't really matter. They what don't, do you mean? They don't care. They don't care. They don't give a shit that you've had a bad day at work. They I don't care. give a shit that there's lice at home. I've not experienced it, babe. We've not had that scenario where okay. I've come home extremely stressed out and you've had an extremely stressed out day. Okay. We've not had... A, we are very blessed. And that we don't have those days like that. And that we are also able to keep in constant communication throughout right. the day. If I'm outside working all day long, I can't be on the phone. If I'm in business meetings all day long, I can't be playing on my phone. We mm -hmm. don't have that kind of life, so we have a leg up above everyone else. But I've witnessed men who are laborers, and I've witnessed men who run businesses, and they have a disconnect for eight hours a day. And when they get home, they have to connect. And if both have had a bad day, it's conflict. I've seen people hit with pizzas. Wow. I've seen people hit with frying pans. I've seen fucking glasses thrown across the house because... Both people are having hard days and they're not talking to each other. I was going to say that this is the beauty of our check-ins because we have learned that it's okay to say, I'm not okay. Mm -hmm. um, there is a safety in that that a lot of people don't get to experience because it's been weaponized and it's, it's not about the other person. It's about me and it's about control and it's about making sure the towels are folded the right way and making sure that the, the kids are taken care of and the fucking mortgage is paid on time and all the other things that matter to that person are the only thing that matters to that person. You know, if I'm, if I'm super stressed out over money and I don't tell you that I'm super stressed out over money and you're, you're, you're run down because the kids have been a lot this week and we're behind on homework and there's been other problems and laundry's not getting done and you're just overwhelmed and I'm overwhelmed and we're not talking about why we're overwhelmed. We are going to butt heads. Mm -hmm. We are not in an emotionally safe environment where one person can be the crutch because we're both holding the world on our shoulders because there's no reprieve because our world is on our shoulders mm -hmm. and, and it's hard to be a teammate with somebody when you're both having to do that. If I'm holding my world up and I'm fucking struggling and I have to take your weight off because we're not talking to each other, I can't hold your world and my world at the same time. It's just not feasible. But if I'm starting to get overwhelmed and I'm like, look, you know, today's the 22nd. We have to make $22,000 by the end of the month to make sure that everything is paid. And I just want to let you know I'm starting to get stressed out. And you're like, I, I get that, babe. I've been kind of going through it. My mental health isn't very good. And, you know, we're fucking, I'm behind on laundry and I feel like the house is dirty and blah, 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 blah. And then we're like, okay, well, what can we do to help each other? I can take a little bit of your world and you can take a little bit of my world. And though it may not weigh the same, we might be able to hold that weight a little bit better as a team than trying to do it independently. This is, this is safety. That's what being safe in your relationship looks like. And if you can't have those conversations and if you don't trust your person with your discomfort or your feel, fear of failure, because they have trained you in any way, shape, or form that it is not okay to talk about these things with them, or they're not going to be there, or they don't trust you, or you don't trust them, your relationship is not going to stand. All I can think of is like the old DuckTales cartoons where the pillars are wobbling and like things yeah. are shaking and everybody's up there balancing like Ace Ventura. <laughs> Spitball. Gonna make the best warrior out of him yet. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. that's what I view in that situation. Eventually, something catastrophic is going to happen and it's going to come down. Mm -hmm. You're, you can't sustain that long term. I don't know. Conversation went way further than I expected it to in terms of all of that, but I think it's good conversation. I agree. I, I, I don't know. I would really like to be able to see... The, the that last situation where two people are extremely stressed out with no communication because I would imagine most men would come home and just try not to talk about their day. Right. They would try to go and take a shower and decompress a little bit more and then probably sit on the couch or play on their phone and not really interact with the family. And if the kids are having a great day and mom and dad are having a bad day or both parents are having a bad day, the kids don't understand what's going on. You're now teaching them to bottle things up instead of actually communicating there's so much that can be learned in a situation like that for everyone involved, kids, parents, the whole nine. Like mm -hmm. 
But in a situation where that that open conversation was able to happen and dad didn't just go get in a shower and was able to, to process what was happening and mom was able to process what was happening. And, uh, well, how was your day? My day sucked. What was your day? Like, oh, my day sucked too. Okay, cool. Now we're going to eat dinner. Like, that doesn't fucking help anyone. Right. It, I understand that we don't always have to talk about problems, right? There are things that that happen in our lives individually that do not deserve the attention that we give them sometimes, right? Sometimes things are completely out of our control and there's nothing that we can do about it. And it still eats at us because we just wish it was different. That's a me problem. If I wish the situation was different and I know that there's absolutely nothing I can do other than pray about it, Mm -hmm. there's no point in me harping on it. I just need to process that, hey, this happens. I need to accept that it happened and just move on from it. What And then maybe um, dissect it. Is there something I could have done a month ago that would have given me a different outcome? That's very realistic. Those conversations don't need to be had between two people. Sometimes you just need to reflect. Sometimes, though, you fucking need an outside perspective. Mm -hmm. I went to work today. Dave said this. I didn't fucking like it, so I put super glue on his fucking hard hat. Now it's stuck to his head. Well, baby, you shouldn't have done that. Right? Like, obviously a very stupid childish thing, but blue collar fields, people do dickhead shit to each other. I just, I don't know. I don't know. Why did why did you let it get to that point with Dave? Why didn't you have the conversation with him two weeks ago when this thing first started and now you two have been butting heads the entire time? Why didn't you put a stop to this early on? Like, you know what I mean? So so mm-hmm. that that matters. And sometimes having that outside perspective matters, especially with borderline. Having that person to call be like, yo, I just I'm about to fucking burn this building down. Well, why? They said they didn't like my shoes and it hurt my feelings. <laughs> yeah, that's borderline looks like that sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, babe, I told that lady you were so fucking pleasant today. You made my day. Thank you. As I walked out the building and now I feel fucking stupid for saying it. You remember that conversation? I do. (laughs) Thank you for being pleasant. (laughs) Who the fuck says that? An enjoyable person. I did. I fucking said that. I want to burn places down when people look at me too long. Yeah. So uh, that that having that outside perspective of somebody who's not involved, Mm -hmm. who doesn't have the judgment, who doesn't have the emotional attachment to it can very much give you a perspective that's not your own. Yeah. Which could, if you um, love or appreciate those people, could change that. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I, I enjoy these. It's I, fun I, conversation. Yeah. It, it's a it's a nice break. Mm-hmm. I, I really love that we help people, right? Like that is the most... It was the AC kicking off. Oh. It always sounds like that. That is the most gratifying experience of my life. Truly, knowing that we are affecting change in people's lives, that's a huge win. It makes me feel like what we're doing is worthwhile. And and like the money is cool. Like we, we've turned this into a business. If we were 100 millionaires and didn't ever have to work again, I would demonetize all of it so that we can talk about whatever we want and didn't have to worry about things. Right. And I would take the podcast in different directions and do other interviews and travel with stuff. And I would make it a very different podcast. But the emails would still be the basis of all of it because we're helping. Having these conversations, though, allows you and I to have a fun discussion that does not have any trauma or stupid shit added to it. Because I think some of the emails that get sent in are people just trying to process their emotions to us. And sometimes it's not cohesive and it doesn't make sense. The amount of people who are like, I was going to send you an email and I wrote it, read it, and was like, nope, I know what the problem is, and then didn't send it. Like, that is even enough. Yeah. So I, I enjoy this. I, I want to continue making sure that we do these things on a weekly basis just to decompress from the from the email. The mental aspect of the email. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else? Mm, no. Okay. Are you sure? Mm-hmm. You remember when in the beginning of this when I was like, Do you have anything else before I would move on? Yeah. And people were like, Damn, I can't believe he's controlling her like that. Just ended her fucking conversation. Da, 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 da. Mm-hmm. Instead of realizing that I'm trying to make sure that you have been heard. Right. It's funny. People are wild. I, I, I'm I'm finding it a different type of enjoyment from that shit now. Yeah. I was just about to wrap this up, but I do want to touch on that for a minute. Okay. Um in lieu of the hate. And I can't say it that way. How do I word this? Despite the hate that we have gotten. I know that there are always going to be people who dislike us 
And the more I get into Adlerian psychology, the more I realize that's a them problem. Mm Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, their disdain for me does not affect me at all unless I allow it to. So as people are trying to drudge up history or people are trying to be like, one time you said this or whatever. So and so said this about you. Right. Uh, so what? Right. Um, Jordan B. Peterson said it's illusory. The inter- illusory. The internet is illusory because his life is phenomenal. And the only time he ever experiences nonsense is when it's on the internet. Mm-hmm. And when he meets people in person, that rarely ever happens. And the people that are in his life don't bring that kind of b- dumb shit to him. So it's a very different thing for him. Right. That was my first like, damn, I can't believe I didn't think about that. Because though I know we are helping people and we have met fans and done meet and greets, these people aren't real to me until I meet them. Or they say, I love your podcast in an airport. Like, they're numbers. It's mm-hmm. all metrics to me. I see the data from all of this. I see the messages and the emails. Those people I understand. Zoom calls I understand. But it's it's when you put a face to it. Um, like the kid that I've been referring to is West Dakota that we met in Arizona. Mm-hmm. I would have never met him before. And if he was like, I love your podcast, I'd have been like, thanks, man. That would have been the end of it. I'm right. not putting a whole lot of weight on him loving the podcast. It feels good. But if he was like, you're a piece of shit, fuck you, I would have put a whole lot more weight on that because it's a negative right but it's also going to add to an inferiority in me right or a um word starts with an r it's just not fucking there it's gone damn (laughs) it's just not there but that would have affected me differently because i will i would allow it to right because people don't want to be disliked it's that makes you feel inferior it makes you feel like you are not good enough Mm -hmm. and everybody wants to feel good enough they want to feel included they want to feel like they um god why can't i think of the fucking word man it's right there starts with an r my brain sucks (laughs) i have lines made on the countertop um anyways you said it starts with an r yeah i think so i could be wrong though I, I did this the other day in the gym with Sean for about 45 minutes. And then I was driving home after playing video games. So I was like, hey, this is the word. <laughs> and he was like, yeah, that totally makes sense, bro. And I was like, just thought you should know. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. It'll come to me like while I'm cooking or taking a poop later. I don't know. Or while you're editing and you yeah. can put it on the screen. Yeah, I could. But we want to, we want to be a part of things. And in and, and that interpersonal relationships, we want to be, uh, we don't want to feel like an outsider. So having somebody tell you they love you and then having somebody else tell you they hate you, that judgment of hate feels way different than that judgment of love. And they're both judgments. Mm -hmm. Um, And then meeting him in person. Now, if he was to be like, you know, hearing what he said to me as we were getting into the elevator, like that hit me way different than an email ever would have because he shook my hand and looked me in the eye. Like there is now a relationship there. There is a respect between him and I. And if he was to reach out and need something, I would, I would try my best to help him because I have an admiration for that man the way he does for me. Um, the whole point of all of that is as these things are coming up and people are disliking what we say or misunderstanding the, the context of the conversation or with somebody that we knew in high school that we did dirty or whatever the case is, that all of that's a them problem. I'm not thinking about the fact that I did you dirty in high school. That was mm-hmm. high school. I'm not thinking about what I did six weeks ago. Who I was a year ago is not who I am now. And who I'm, who I'm going to be six months to a year from now is not who I am right now. And I know that I'm on a forward trajectory and I'm not living in the past. The past happened. That was the best I could do in the moment for whatever my reasoning was, even if it was wrong, Mm -hmm. but I'm not living then I'm living now. And I have new coping mechanisms and I have new learned abilities and new understandings of things that I didn't have then that could be a, a difference from a day. Yeah. You read a book that gives you a gold nugget and you're like, oh my God, I can't believe I didn't see this. And now you see it. You're not who you were yesterday. Mm -hmm. And though you may still have to pay for the sins of yesterday. It's. You have it with a different mindset. You have it with a different mindset. There's an acceptance there. Mm -hmm. I don't, um, I don't know. I'm really hoping that I can keep this, this mindset and this feeling because I'm laughing at a lot of the stupid shit now. Yeah. And though I still respond to some of it on TikTok, I enjoy the responding to it. Yeah. Um, I, I understand how I, I sound like I, I am a very intense speaker mm-hmm. and sometimes it sounds angry, but when people hear me angry, they're like, Whoa, he's definitely not angry all the time. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm human. You are human. Yeah. 
You're so, hot when you're angry. Am I? Oh man, so you're trying to repair this conversation and make me feel good? <laughs> trying to manipulate me, woman? Trying Maybe. to get me to manipulate me to take my clothes off? Always. That being said, guys, remember you are the authors of your own life. So grab a pen <laughs> and we'll see you on the next one. Bye, guys. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> <laughs>